Bonjour, in this episode I show you my best tips on shooting all monuments. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer living in the amazing, the incredible city of Paris, France. Yes, the incredible city. And I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click here if you want to receive the three raw files I'm giving you for free in this episode and all the past episodes. At the end of this podcast, I have a presentation of my new course, Paris in Spring Part 1, that just came out. I put a lot of work into it with all my team. I think you will love it. Last week, I showed you how to work with Lightroom and your libraries as you travel, how to edit them, how to re-import all the photos once you've deaded them in the hotel back to your main desk. This is what I covered in last episode. In this episode, I'm going to give you my best tips on how to shoot monuments. Monuments is very hard to shoot because they often it's interesting to them at night, they have distortion problems, all kinds of problems. That's the final result, the Arc de Triomphe of Paris that we're going to be doing. A photo that became a very nice postal card in Paris and that I sold to many companies. So. Let me show you how I took this photo and the whole workflow about it. All right, mesdames et messieurs. So this is a photo that I shot uh, actually seven years ago, I believe. I have reasons to believe that it's about seven years ago. Uh, yeah, it was in, um, in October 2007, not exactly seven years ago. And uh, sometimes I like to go into my Lightroom catalog and find some old photos for tutorials or just for their you know, playing and trying to create a nice photo. And I wanted to give some tips about shooting monuments at night. So usually in monuments are the nicest are nice. This is the Arc de Triomphe. It's a beautiful monument that's completely at the top of the Champs Elysees, one of the biggest avenue in Paris. The only problem with this is there's cars all over. So I wanted to really uh, have a great shot of that monument. And if you look at it, you can see the Eiffel Tower is there and the moon is right on the top of the Eiffel Tower. I have a nice night, it's pretty cool. And the funny thing is that evening, we had, uh, there was some uh, rugby uh, final cup and there was lots of people in Paris. But uh, cars were moving pretty fast, so I had this idea to shoot this uh, on a tripod with three exposure. So this is a normal exposure, this is the underexposure, and this is the overexposure. And actually, every photo has got something that I like, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to work with all three. I'm not going to do HDR. What I want is, I like this one because it's got most of the data. This was shot with a 5D Mark I, the 5D Mark II did not exist at the time, in, uh, it was before it was released. And um, and this, uh, what I like about this photo is I like the lamp. The lamp is not overexposed. The 5D Mark I did not have the dynamic range of the 5D Mark II or the Mark III or the Sony A7R. So on the regular photo, it's pretty burned here. And, uh, what, and what I like about this last photo is, you know, um, there was a longer exposure. This was uh, uh, 10 seconds. This was uh, 0.5, like half a second, and this was 2.5 of a second. So on the 10 second one, that was like a bracketing, probably like minus two, zero one plus two. Uh, the cars were running fast, uh, were, you know, more blur. So here is how I'm gonna retouch this. First, uh, one thing that is very hard when you wanna shoot monuments at night is that, you know, with the city lights on, it gets very yellow. It's really hard to get the right colors. So I'm gonna show you two things that I do about colors. But first, let's do my standard workflow. I'm gonna open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. And then I'm gonna do my white point, which I'm holding the Alt key, and that's why everything is black. And now I'm gonna do my black point. Okay, uh, now I'm not gonna add so much clarity. I think I'm gonna leave clarity at zero for now. I like to play around a lot with selective clarity. So I've boosted a lot of the contrast. I think I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. Uh, sorry, a bit, uh, a bit darker. I'm gonna lower a bit the exposure. And um, now you see, well, we have a lot. Let's correct the lights. For the light, let's see what we have. Uh, if I go for daylight, it's gonna be, uh, well, very blue and very yellow. If I go for shade, it's gonna be super red. And if I go to tungsten, tungsten is not bad. And let's check fluorescent. Yeah, fluorescent is not bad. I think fluorescent is the one I like the most. So all I'm gonna do is, I'm, it's just too much color, so I'm gonna desaturate a little bit. So I did fluorescent and desaturate and maybe just add a little bit more of magenta. 
because that's what I like to do all the time. Now, let's take care of the noise. Let's see if it's a noisy photo. It's not because it was shot at 100 ISO. So I'm going to put the sharpening around 100. Okay. And I'm going to lower the noise reduction. Maybe I'm just going to put 10. And as you do the sharpening at 100, that's just my formula. I put sharpening at 100. Uh, if I do a bit of noise reduction, in this case, I'm doing 10. Then I'm going to back it down to, to 90. I'm taking 100 minus whatever I've put on in the luminance there. Okay, next, I want to mask the, the sharpening so that I only sharpen the buildings and not the sky. You see how it's grainy here? So if you press the Alt key and you move the masking tool to the right, I do that until I've got a black sky. This way, there is not so much sharpening happening uh, on the sky itself. So I, I kind of like that. Now let's move to the magic buttons. Uh, on the bio lens uh, profile correction, remove chromatic aberration, remove chromatic aberration, and the new magic auto, and boom! Look at that. Auto got the whole thing to look great. I really like what it did there. Okay, so now um, basically I'm ready. I'm ready to uh, take this retouching, select all three photos, click on Think, and synchronize. And now I'm going to do digital blending because I um, there's too much cars going on here, right? Now, if you look, this is the underexposed photo. Look in the underexposed photo. All I'm looking at is is the light here. I, I love when we have details of the bulb. Maybe it's a bit too much, so I'm going to brighten this up a little bit. And on this one, this one I'm interested by the cars here. So what I want to do is I want to lower the exposure of that until it matches this one. Okay, because if you look at it on the, on the 10 second one, the cars are a lot more erased than on the, on the 2.5 second. Okay, so now, yeah, it's about the same level. So now I have all three uh, photos. So I'm going to mainly be using this one. Then I'm going to take the lamp here from this one, just the bulb. And then I'm going to take uh, this, uh, the lone exposure from this one. Okay, so ready. I'm going to right click, edit, and open as layers in Photoshop. Open as layers in Photoshop, what that's going to do is uh, it's just going to enable me to uh, basically use layers to mix all three exposures so that I get the best out of each world. Okay, then once we've done that, uh, I'm going to take off some of the cars. Erase some of the objects to you know just so we have all the attention just on the lamp and on the monument. Okay, so here we go. Now the first thing that I do is I make sure that the underexposed photo with the lamp is on the top. Okay, then here I'm going to use the mask tool, which is here. Pressing the Alt key, it's going to make a black mask. Black mask means that everything is gone except the lamp. Okay, so now I've got a black mask, meaning this this layer is totally hidden. Now, however, if I put white as my foreground color and with a brush maybe of 50%, I can bring back. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to, I'm using the stem tool. I have to use the brush, which is here, brush tool. So I'm brushing opacity 50% of white on the layer. So it's going to make basically appear whatever is under. Voila. It's just that the eyes goes to the brighter spot of the photo. So if this is too bright and it's just like a big blob of white, people are going to just see that and not going to look at the rest of the photo. Okay, now this is being down. I can make another mask, but this time a white mask, and I'm going to do the opposite. This time I'm going to take, I'm going to put black as my foreground because I want to hide this. Uh, so I'm going to go at 100% and I just want to bring some of the lone exposure streaks here. Okay. Check this out. Without the mask, disable. I'm just bringing some of the lone exposure so I have less to uh, erase. Now that I've got the best out of three worlds, I'm going to take all three layers and press Command E or go to Layer, um, Merge Layer. So only I have one layer. I've got, and I'm going to duplicate this, this layer. And now let's do some uh, more retouching. First, I want to see if I can take some of the streak lights. For this, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to take the stem tool. Okay. I'm going to take the stem tool, make it about this size. And I want to, it's, it's a lot of rocks there. I want to see what happens if I take something like this and I just put it over here. Oh, my stem tool is not at 100%. Okay. Now let's put it at 1%. And I'm just trying to get 
you know, some of the street lights out of here. So that's kind of cool. I actually want to get that out, out of the picture completely. So that's not bad. I mean, I don't mind. There is still some, some stuff going on, but you know, not as much, you know, I want to sort of try to clean up the photo as much as I can. Now that's the good thing that is when you have a pattern that is so regular, like this one is kind of easy. Okay, I want to take that out also. I think it's disturbing. You know, you have this rule in photography, which is called border police. You know, this is just in the border of the photo. It's got nothing there. So using the stem tool, I'm going to click here and um, see if I can just copy that. It's a bit of a mess. Click here on the side what and copy this. I just want to get this out of the way. Oops. Okay, you have to do it one strike at a time. One strike at a time. Okay, and then you have some repeating patterns. So I'll just make sure that I copy this on this and this so that there's no repeating patterns. You get the idea. Now this kind of looks weird, but I don't think anybody will notice. Uh, I don't think so, because it could be how it is. And however, this people could notice. So I'm gonna take that out. Just make sure that to respect perspective that you use the same on the same level of the stones. Okay, so check it out before, after, before, after. Maybe there's a little bit of paper here I can take out. Just, you know, want to clean up, sorry. My stem tool is too big. So let's go like this and like this. And voila. Just want to take the, oh, could have done a better job there. Anyways, you get the concept, you know. I'm not going to spend half an hour doing that. Okay, here, over here we have some more to get rid of. Just going to take that out. And I'm just leaving some of it, you know, but not all of it. Okay, this is disturbing for me because it's right in the corner. So I'm just going to take it out. All right. And believe me, no one is going to notice that I took some stuff out there before, after, before, after. Okay, so now we come to the point where we are ready to do... Um, now, I could end here and this is like the standard type of, uh, you know, street light, you know, how they, they look at night. But what I like to do, and I think it works very well on old monuments, is I like to add a sepia look to it. So I usually go to the black and white filter, which is here. Let me show you the options. And you have the option called to tint here. And by default, what it does, it gives a sepia look. And I think sepia looks on old photo like this works really well. So we could go for a look like this, or you could lower the opacity of that and just bring back some of the photo and go for like a half sepia look, something like that. I think it works great for like monuments like this. Uh, honestly, on this photo, I think I would spend a bit more time trying to clean up here uh, on the monument itself using the stamp, the, the, the stamp tool, which can be a lot of work or not. It depends uh, because, you know, some of these motifs are repeating. But anyways, I've made other tutorials on that. I'm not going to show you because it's going to be very long, but I would clean that up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, honestly, the photo was uh, uh, really worked really well. So you know what? I'm going to give it a little sepia look like this. And we've got the Arc de Triomphe, you know, and I like this idea of having the lamp here with the name plus Charles de Gaulle and the Arc de Triomphe. It makes a really, uh, I think, a very dynamic photo. Uh, now to finish this off, I'm going to finish it off in... Uh, Lightroom, so I'm going to click on save and I'm going to close it. It's going to save and it's going to re-import it back into Lightroom. I'm going to use a sepia look of it and I just want to add to it a little bit of post crop vignetting. I think post crop vignetting is going to do miracles on this one and add just a little touch of drama. And to finish it off, I could maybe add a bit of clarity, uh, you know, overall just for the hell of it. And I think we've got a very nice dramatic photo of the Arc de Triomphe. Of course, you know, I would spend more time cleaning that up, but I just want to show you a bit this philosophy. And, uh, you know, it's a happy accident. It's one of a, a very old photo I took seven years ago when I was playing around with it. And uh, I just wanted to show you, share this with you guys. And I'm actually giving you for free all three or files so you can play around with it and maybe get, a, get even a better result than what I did. But I love the drama of that photo. And... Um, Hope you like this and check out my new course, Paris in Spring, uh, part one that just came out. I, we put a lot of work into this course and I hope you will love it. Okay, back to me. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. I'm very happy to announce that I have a new course coming out called Paris in Spring. Two weeks ago, uh, I gathered with 10 photographers and for a full week, we shot in Paris. We got up at five in the morning, just about every morning. We got every sunset and sunrise, we went to the Mont Saint-Michel, we did lots of photography 
and I tried to teach them as best as I could so they would get the best shots. Now, here is a little presentation of the final shots and some of the people that were there. So check out my new course, Paris in Spring. You will get all the raw files, all the retouching from A to Z so you can follow along. So if you are not with me, well, you can experience it from the web, which is amazing. So here's my little presentation. I would recommend this workshop to anyone I know interested in photography. Um, uh, friend or no friend. <laughs> Been daunting for me, but uh, it's been it, the photography level has moved up, I think, a lot just after this one week. You know, as a photographer, these kind of things get you to another level, they raise you up a little bit, uh, they get your creative juices flowing, you learn Photoshop techniques you didn't know. And it was just, just marvelous. I just want to thank everybody that participated and made it an experience for me, one once in a lifetime experience for me. Thank you. So the highlights of my trip is Serge Remedy itself. Because in everything you do, uh, the only thing important is passion. And I think this man's got first that passion and he has also the, all the generosity to transfer it to every student. All right, guys, I hope you liked my presentation of Paris in Spring and you will check out this course. It's awesome, at least I hope. And I will see you in the next episode. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.